Hello, everybody. Welcome to the seventh. I checked now to make sure this is actually the seventh, but the seventh episode of the council. We have Sanjita, Tasnex, Van Seal here. Um, Callan is busy, occupied with real life things. Uh, so welcome. Um, I let everybody uh, introduce themselves, and then we'll we'll start digging in. So in reverse order on my screen, Van Seal. How are they I'm, going? I'm Van Seal with my screen reversed today due to technical issues. Um, but yeah, I'm Van Seal. I uh, make YouTube videos. I stream on Twitch, and, and I pretty much focus on anything TW related and just whatever you're not supposed to do in the game, apparently. So. <laughs> I'm I'm very curious to hear about your GAC experience this last month. Then, should be interesting. Tass, yourself, who are you? Hey, I'm Tassnix. Um, I stream on Twitch as well. Uh, I also have Tassnix Gaming as my YouTube channel, and I am very GAC focused. Always trying to stay inside the top 100 Kyber one. Thank you. Thank you very much. And you have a new video series. I heard you just started as well. Doing some yes, sort of, I do. Uh... Well, thank you so kindly for asking. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, you know, most of my stuff's very long. So this was an idea to try and capture a little more short uh, content market. And it's just 15, bit, uh, 15 minute or, you know, thereabouts uh, video on covering a how to mod a character. First, I'm going over, you know, the leadership and the kit of the character so that you understand the context for why we mod it the way we do. And then I cover some other details about, you know, how you apply it all. So it's new. It's fun. Cool. Uh, I'm enjoying it and people are loving it. So thank you for asking. Looking forward to checking them out. Last but certainly not least, Sanjita, who is you? Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, pretty much just YouTube. Don't really stream. Just the pre-recorded videos focused on Grand Arena. I do some TW stuff. Um, more focused on roster development too, and um, recently this year started a new free to play account. So, and I also just recently got to Grand Arena on that account. So I have some Carbonite footage as well as Kyber One footage uh, from my main account. Cool. So, loving the both sides of the game. Uh, and you can just find me on my channel, Sanjita S O N G E T A. Did you do the whole of the last season on your newer account? I did. Yes. I actually got promoted to Bronze M4 at the end of the season, which is probably not good because the last two battles, my opponents just didn't attack. They were like 8 million, and now I need seven teams Oof. on defense and offense, whereas I needed three on offense and defense for 5v5. So That is a huge jump. It is. Yeah. Um, cool, thank you. Well, I am Kin... I haven't done very much in the last month except to play the actual game. Um, hopefully, I'll be back to doing my little podcast, um, the meta moment, as we go through. But uh, we'll see how the next next few weeks goes. I think I should have some more time, but we'll see. Um, so with that, let's... Oh, yeah, you can find me at grandarenascience.com on Discord or the web page, counters page. Um, let's go ahead and get started. So we just sort of started talking about this uh, a bit. Uh, how did the last season go? I guess, Sanjita, since you were just talking about your new account, um, how did it go for your main account and your new account? Anything strange, weird, fun, etc.? cetera? Uh, I think it went pretty good for my main account. I don't know if I went five and four, six and three. I think it was a winning season. Um, but I, it was kind of a blur because, you know, when you're doing two different accounts for the GAC, you kind of get your wires crossed. I think overall it was good. The new account was kind of fun because I was facing, like, every account. I mean, there were some accounts that were, like, 1 million GP like me, and those were kind of easy wins. But then most of it's, like, Lightspeed Bundle accounts where it's just a bunch of Relic characters, but their mods are, like, garbage. Like, one, one I faced this one character that had, like, plus three speed on it. Like, that's it. Just three. It was impressive. Wow. Impressively bad. And then it's just, like, trying to beat these higher, like, Relic teams with... Uh, you know, gear nine to gear eleven Phoenix, and a Jedi team with one or two relics, and then uh, just a relic Darth Vader on a gear eleven Palpatine. So that that part was fun. Uh, on the main account, it's honestly I'm kind of drawing a blank. <laughs> it was kind of a blur. It was still like offense heavy. Um, 
I started taking Dart Trooper Moff Gideon off on offense towards the end because I figured people were looking at him as, okay, I, I, I'm going to see Dart Trooper Moff Gideon on defense, so I, I switched it to take it on offense, and that was fun. Um, and took, like, Trey on offense a couple times after uh, using that team on defense for most of the season. Uh, but yeah, it was kind of an even Stevens season. Cool. Any, anything in particular besides Gideon that you saw that was on your main account, at least, that was strange or surprising or uh, I, Well, we're going to see this more going forward, but even without, like, the Gungan-specific data cron, they were still really difficult to beat. I, I had one match towards the end. I, I faced them twice. Uh, both times they were, like, all R8+, plus with all the Omicrons, and mm. um, the one time I was just trying to, like, I had I'd already lost the match, so I was experimenting a bit with a bunch of stuff. It wasn't great experimenting because I preloaded after like one match because I tried Afra first and I was doing okay, and then the whole team died in one shot, so I preloaded. Um, I eventually got it down to like one character with a Lord Vader team, and then the next match people were telling me to use Malgus, and I did, and it was like if we had a six or seven minute clock, I'd win, but I timed out against like one or two characters left. Um, so I like, and that was without a Gungan specific data cron. So I, I kind of shudder to think what they're going to be like, like, I don't even know what to overkill it with, uh, this first week. So it's going to be really crazy to see them in action. Yeah. It, it's going to be interesting too, because in three V three, they don't have nearly the sustain. I mean, they're going to be good. Oh, I true. think Yeah, three V three, but yeah. It's going to be interesting. I, I faced the Gungans a few times, too. And I had one friendly, well, whatever, guildmate who, who faced my Gungans as well and were able to sort of trade information back and forth, again, with no no special data cron. But it's very... What I've noticed about the Gungans, at least in 5v5, it is one of the most turn-order-dependent teams that you have out there with the like burst damage that comes out, if you set it up correctly, devastating. Like similar to Bad Batch. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's exactly how I felt. Um, but a lot more sustain. So, yeah, I'm curious about the, the set. How about you, Tass? What, did you fight Gungans? How did your, how did your season go? Um, I think I was like six and three, something. Uh, no, no, like seven and two. I think I only lost two the, the whole nice. season. They were both like, real matches once to zid and once to sasha um so good good fights but a lot of it was just a rhodium so that's just still a hot mess out there um as far as fighting gungans goes in five versus five malgus i i probably took a little longer than i strictly needed to but i barely won that fight like with 20 something seconds on the clock so you know that was before the cron i'm sure that'll be less reliable this time but the next match i did use inquisitorious and even though i kind of just kept getting ponged between phalanx and jar jar uh just the sheer amount of aoe was able to chip down the shield generator and pretty much like immediately after the shield generator dies they just melt yeah yeah i i've seen jml work a couple of times and it's sort of reflected in the the stats afterwards too to be able to just focus down the shield generator and then jml with like well. the full right. complement like 500 of... defense or something yeah 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 with the with jkr and as many other good jedi as possible not it's not a sure thing like it's the stats are not great they're like 70 percent, but i think it's just because people don't focus the shield generator first and then i'm not sure what to do yep but, how about you? How about you, Van Seal? What did your season look like? I finished with six and three. It should have been seven and two, uh, but I don't know if you guys remember, TB broke the game, <laughs> and people could not log in for whatever reason. So um, that one that I lost, uh, my opponent only cleared one zone, so I literally had to just beat, like, six teams and uh, couldn't get into the game. So um, only got full cleared twice, so that was good. Um, didn't find any Gungans, but I did set Bane the entire season with some interesting results, and I was pretty pleased with 
what I was seeing on dot gg and I really want to invest in that team now um and kind of kind of fine tune you, it for set defense Bing? in the future. Yes. Darth Who with Bing. on defense. Uh I did it was Talon, Malik, Marauder and Set. They what lead. your uh yes. Malgus team look like uh, It was either a three man squad or a four man squad. It was either Revan and Basti or Revan Basti and Sass on offense. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need a full... I don't think you need a full Malgus team on offense, depending on what you're taking it against. Usually I took Malgus on offense against, like, resistance, like that Fin Fin Zori team. Mm, uh, Malgus yeah. kind of, like, takes care of them pretty quickly, so you don't need Malik there for anything. But, uh, yeah, really, I made, a, I made a video talking about Bane on defense, and uh, it looks... It looks interesting, um, and I think it's a really good way to throw people off and make them overcommit, and uh, you kind of play that value game with them. Yeah. Cool. I'm curious to see the stats. I haven't even looked at... Uh, I looked at a few teams on defense, obviously, when I was doing my attacks and stuff, but Bane on defense certainly was not one of those teams. Marauder... I, got, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta give Marauder some better mods because there's a lot of buffs that get put out from Darth Bane, and mm -hmm. the Datacron also gives your opponents buffs. And Marauder really likes it when uh, there's buffs out there because he gets a bunch of defense and a lot of tenacity and health steal, so he just becomes a real pain to kill. Cool. Very interesting. Yeah, my, my season was, I think, a 5 and 4, but probably could have been 6 and 3. There's one match where I didn't, I couldn't attack or I only did, like, the first... 20 minutes of my attacks or something like that. Um, I was really, I had very little chance. I, for the first time in my GAC career, I set the same defense for the entire month. And well, I, I changed it twice. I, I changed for the last two, for the last week, I added the Gungans, but that was the extent of my, my changing. I <laughs> felt pretty dirty, I have to say. Like, <laughs> it was not a pleasant feeling. But surprisingly enough, it didn't seem to make any real difference. People still dropped, you know, one or two fights. and But, ah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Weird. I'm not sure I like it. Um, but it was, it was actually, I, I had a lot of fun attacking this season. I thought it would be a bit more Datacron dependent and stuff would be, you know, there'd be like one or two super teams. But with Bane... I mean, if you keep Bane and BKM on offense, you can kill virtually any two teams. So there's not that much that you really have to worry about. Seer and Malikos were still destroying stuff. BKM so, was like one of the only teams that I actually thought was pretty safe to put on defense just because it's pretty challenging um, no matter what. And then like people weren't setting their Lord Vader's. Because everyone yeah. has BKM just in case. Uh, that's the thing. I if I would have changed my defense around, I'm almost positive my BKM would have gone on defense. There's just there aren't a lot of great options for it. Um, but I mostly just built my offense and put other stuff on defense, and then that managed pretty well throughout the season. Sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Who's BKM? Uh, Bo-Katan uh, Bo Mandalore. Mandalore. Oh. Gosh. Okay, I haven't heard an acronym yet. I, I'm just yeah, I hear BKM. I'm thinking Burger King Man or something. I'm like, I, I yes, BKM. I I'm I like, thought the same lost. thing. Yeah. <laughs> when I'd see it written, I thought like Burger King Manager or something. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, it, okay. so that team was really good on defense, but with this uh, resistance cron that that came out here, um, and that we were that a lot of folks were using in uh, in fives. That just seemed to crush it. I had a couple opponents that I thought it was in their attack history where if I set down my BKM, you know, it's like 65, done with that Finzori with the Holdo. You had to commit a lot to it, you know, to, to make it all work like a song. But, um, yeah, I, you know, there was a couple opponents where I had to pull, pull it because I'm like you, dude. I, I prefer it on defense because there's so few things that deal with it cleanly. But, you know, if you set your Finzori on defense last season, Night Sisters got to gobble it up for free. Yep. So if, if anybody was keeping it for offense, it was just a free dunk. I I, I've, I had trouble with Night Sisters against Zori, so I kept my Zori on defense. I, I didn't check to see how it was, like, doing against everything, but, like, 
it was i don't know i think there was one where i barely got out alive even with night sisters i, I killed like... them almost i think every week with with night sisters i think you have to have a well modded um marin because you usually you can usually it, it's like two hits or something so if you get an aoe or a, a mass attack versus marin she might uh, not get enough TM to get a turn before they take another turn. Yeah, the, but, the uh, most common, like, so the most common comp variants that would face, there was like 3,000 against uh, with Resistance Hero Poe, and then 1,000 mm -hmm. with Rose. The Poe one was a 78.7% win rate, and then the Rose was a 52% win rate with Night Sisters. So it probably what yeah There's probably a was a modding. Yeah, um, well, it's also it's also just um, knowing how to use the abilities in the right sequence because I was seeing it like a lot of folks in the top one hundred had it down pat. I wasn't that practiced in it, so I wasn't really doing it myself. But I had to plan around it in my in my you know in my scouting because it's like I see who can do this, so like I'm not gonna give that to you. Yeah, uh, I, apparently, apparently I'm not among that number. You can't be good at everything. You don't have the time to learn how to be good at everything in this game. It is crazy, too, how uh, how good Finn was on offense. I mean, no real surprise there, but, man, he would kill a ton of stuff. I saw him taking down some of the big Ray teams, taking down Jabba, BKM, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. I, I almost always had it on defense. This is the first season I think I ever used it on offense. Like, two or three times like even once would be a huge deal for me but yes yes it was it was very much fun last season now yeah, once you get the tm going pretty cool mm -hmm. uh let's see how, how about the, the new dc set now 15 oh boy uh make sure, you got 30, make sure you got 30 of them 30 15 yeah, yeah at um, least the... uh my my farming's shifted a little bit um so i like discovered something within the first order level six um i made a video talking about that the first order level six the one that's like a big paragraph mm -hmm. it actually works with any team mm -hmm. it works Is with any team to... like as the long as you have one first order character required any, oh. ah, okay. any team any leader the only requirement for it to be active is you need one first order ally on the team Mm -hmm. which so is, is kind of crazy because just, uh, how it's written it, well if you read it it's like if the, how it's worded the way yeah, it's worded yeah, it's, is like it's, a, it's, it's working as written yeah but i think reading it i i maybe the devs were just assuming we'd all use like crew lead or slkr lead or a full first order team but it doesn't specify that the leader has to be anything the leader just has to be present and you have to have a yeah, first totally. ally there yeah so, so what are you really thinking? Got me thinking for 3v3 like you can do something like steer malico's crew mm. and as long but as then you're just take juicing damage, up seer right yes but as long as the leader doesn't take damage the a random first order ally gets damage immunity yeah so if yeah, you give exactly. crew damage immunity while he has taunt mm. that sounds like a fun time for your opponent that's a good point yeah wow um, so That's there's cool. a lot of creativity with that Kron. Um, even like pulling away Red Trooper and putting him with Sith maybe in 5v5. Um, so that one, I'm like, I don't know how people are going to abuse that or use it, but um, we'll see. I'm, there's so many ways that I could abuse it. Yeah, there's I most mean, people, Lord, especially the top Lord have Vader like... lead with uh, OG Kylo or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's Yum. uh, there's a lot of uh, weird interactions with it now, and you're just kind of like, huh. Well, yeah, I guess I need more of those than like two. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, all the stats on this set. Um, oh, they're crazy. The yeah, stats are great, but none of them are so heavily weighted as armor penetration. Like it's extreme the amount of armor penetration that you can build up again, yeah. and then like for this first week of conquest. 
um, so important, like what Van Seal was saying, like just to get enough crons, like the specifically, like going, you know, getting getting enough level nines, whatever you think you can go for is great, but like so having enough level threes, because the bulk is just going to be so, uh, just such a big deal. That's going to be like your base cron for any team until you can prove that something else is better. Yep. Yeah. And the thing is, too, there's no equivalent, at least in 14 and 15, there's no equivalent defensive stats. You just have bulk from 14 and, of course, bulk from 15, but no defense. So it's Yeah, I, be... I was about to right. make the same point. Just because, like, set 9 that had the same abilities, they had defense in there, so everyone would get, like, 400% defense plus all the bulkiness. So but this is, like, the opposite. There's no defense, and it's, like, every type of offensive stat you can think of. So it helps kind of yeah. counteract itself. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, it's going to be messy. I'm very curious to see how the Gungans split up in 3v3, too. Because the team that most people will have now, which Gungans are, well, Nass and Tarful, not Tarful. Uh, Tarful. Uh, Tarful. Tarful, yeah. <laughs> like, like the bone, meta, meta Tarfuls. Exactly, as he throws his explosive. Uh, I mean, Tarfuls. He uses them to Boomba. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but you who's... want to know about three versus three teams. I actually just discussed this in the. Uh, video I put out about Boss Nass because about comps where you might use him in, in threes. Um, I mean, if you have Jar Jar, it's going to be Nass and Jar Jar. And right. then I think that if you're putting him on defense, Boss Nass is the better way to go as far as the level nine is. Uh, it's just going to extend the life of your shield that much longer. And then you have a case. It's like, well, if you're really trying to do all that, Maybe you want to consider throwing in Phalanx and then have, you know, like a taunt juggle threat for a timeout risk. Short of short of that, um, yeah, it would either be Boombadir or Tarpals. And I'm not 100% sure which one I like more. I think the way that I mod Tarpals, I think I probably prefer it to be Boombadir. But that's that's it. And then as far as offense goes, yeah, I would, you know, uh, probably Boombadir. Like, Boombadir is really, really, really good. Yeah, you put out a ton of damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've been wondering, like, what is a way to split up... Nass, I agree, on defense makes the most sense. But what Gungans when you use for offense? That's the... If there's a way to do it effectively, but you only have one leadership, so it's somewhat challenging. Well, you're say if you're saying that you're curious if there's any type of Gungan split, absolutely not. No. Absolutely. Leader. Yeah. They're they're not they don't perform under a non Gungan leader and, and like yeah. you just said, there is only one, so yeah. No shield generator and no defense, and they just kind of melt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm still hopeful. I have a some things I'm curious to try, but I'm not that hopeful. Just be curious to see what uh, what happens. I, I would love, I would love to be proven wrong and have two well modded characters be applicable somewhere. I, I would be, I would be into it. But yeah, I, I don't see it. I don't see it. I really don't. Yeah. But you, and there's but a lot of factions that are like that too. Like in three v three, there's some factions where it's just like you just realistically can't use everybody. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But you were dead nuts right about that turn order thing, uh, Ken. Like the the turn order for the fives team, like. The, the Phalanx is so fast already, and modding him to be decently fast, and then faster than Boombadir, faster than Tarpals, yeah. is, that is heinous. Because, yeah, when he puts down, I, I you know, you tested it, you can test it in Conquest or whatever um, to see what the AI would do, but Phalanx will use the AoE tenacity down, and then you have Boombadir and Tarpals do all of their everything, and it's just a horror show. Yeah, it puts out crazy, crazy damage. And control be... and stun and a billion debuffs. It's just a mess. Yeah. Um, I'm very... Since most people don't have Gungans, um, I know you guys are some of the few that have some up-and-running Gungans. What are you guys doing with Slicker this season? Because that, that's something I'm interested to see. Like, if people are putting him on defense, defense. if they're just using Slicker Kron, if they're using the Special Forces TIE Phylic Kron... Uh, cause there's a lot of options. Uh, definitely defense. I think I'm going to try and abuse that level six. 
because um, I know when 5v5 comes back, the one team I'm thinking about in my brain right now is SLKR, Special Forces, Daka Zombie Marin. And just mm. say, figure it out. Go ahead and figure it out. So I haven't figured out my SLKR team for defense yet, but I definitely want to try and see if I can manipulate that level six where, hey, if SLKR is the only first order character, he's going to get DI if he doesn't get hit. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, I think mine's going on defense too, but I have no clue what it's going to be. I'll figure it out tomorrow or the day after sometime. <laughs> Uh, I'm thinking since every I anticipate everyone putting it on defense, I might take mine on offense just to handle the other Kylo Rans if mine is faster than my opponents. Because like in yeah, arena, yeah. I've been doing it. You basically you just kill the other like if you use the slicker level nine, you basically kill the other slicker in one hit. Like you just do the assist with uh with Hux so that it, it dispels the advantage and then it double crits like three hundred thousand each hit and then <laughs> the other slicker just dies. Even with all the, the extra is, though, protection. I have to say, in, in threes, even well, even in the, the last couple of TW, I guess, and five, five, the SLKR, or the First Order DCs in general, are not what I'm worried about. It is those JMKs with the Padme level nines. Oh, yeah, that one's crazy. You are wise that, to be afraid. Yeah. thing is brutal. I mean, yeah. it's... As overall, if you have the the level six and the level nine, and of course the level three, stats don't really matter that much. I mean, that team, you can virtually auto at least in arena, you can auto everything. Slacker and you don't have will beat it though. Slacker Slacker is the apex predator of this set for sure. And, I, and I know. Of... Sorry, go ahead. go ahead. No, no, I was going to say yes. I know you can beat it, but it'll still auto beat Slacker. You know, it can go either ways. If you're playing it on offense, of course, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the, a thing that you guys probably are already aware of is classically, like, JKR um, can beat Slacker because, you know, you get um, three stacks of Beskar armor on him, and Slacker is mm -hmm. going to hard focus on him, and he can't critically strike him, so you're forestalling him from getting ultimate forever. You blow up the rest of his team, and then you devour him. Uh, it still works. It still works in fives anyway, from fives, like, you know, people testing that around. Um, I've seen that. But, like, in threes, it may well still work. So for, for any of you guys that are thinking of putting Slacker on defense, consider trying to set some type of JKR draw. If, if yeah. your opponent shows any, you know, you know ability to do past, whatever. The do you, do you think Slicker is like reliable against JMK though? I mean, I've been that's one of the few matches even available to me in Squad Arena right now, and I, I've got it like I don't know forty percent of the time. I, I, there's nothing. There is. I don't even have the the burst one. I think you guys are right that half Slacker one uh, is the burst here of the two. So I'm running the um, FOTP one or the FOSF one, whichever one that is that that goes with them. Uh, it's it's a slam dunk. Like it, I it, I would not describe it as close. I would not describe it as challenging. Like do I do I lose a character in fives? Um, no, they just die. <laughs> they just all die. Like even cats. Like I'm just gonna go ahead and be stunned because yeah, yeah. It's good. And cat cat could also just leap onto uh, special forces and nothing happens. Nothing. Happens. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Like you just explode everybody with slacker. So the, this JMK is like I don't know what I'm all gonna do with JMK, but like early on, so I'm not caught with my pants down. Probably keeping slacker is a get out of jail free card for that. I'm I'm wondering if Lord Vader will be good too, because it's all about protection disruption, and they don't care about that. That's yeah. a really smart observation. Anything that's converting their protection to health yeah. is champ against this protection disruption stuff. However, yeah, and then, however uh, there's that bug like, with protection disruption where it doesn't work with Lord Vader if they get... Um, if, so protection disruption is weird, and I've gone back and forth with CG on this so many different times because they've changed it, um, the way protection disruption works ever since it came to the game. So the text is it disables and removes the protection bar completely. Like, it just takes it out of the game. It's gone. But if Lord Vader gets bonus protection somehow before it gets applied 
it stays. But yeah, bonus always... protection still comes back. You can see it if you're fighting JMK yeah. mirrors. It doesn't actually take away bonus protection, just the protection. No, it says, it says it does protection. It says protection of bonus protection, and like it takes away completely, but it's never been a big enough issue where I think they've actually probably have talked about it, but it just, when you read it, it's one of those things where it's like, it doesn't play the way it reads. I guess. Yeah, You're saying that in the worst case for Lord Vader, it might cost you whatever kind of protection up that he might be holding, but you're not you're not going to be able to just take off a bunch of survivability off that Correct. team for free. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think the only thing that makes that a little more challenging at the beginning, at least, is that Cat can ignore whatever taunt you have in place and potentially go directly after um, Maul if you try the Maul RG setup, but it's sort yeah. of a crapshoot anyway. But the only thing I'm planning that's kind of interesting, I guess, is how I'm going to do Bane in threes on defense. Um, <laughs> I'm really thinking about just dropping his Kron and just jumping to the new set and just saying, I'm going to throw him just... with a uh, um, Sith Trooper. And then you throw put like, him yeah. with one Sith and one like gear one level one character and hope they just die. Uh, no, I'm going to run the new set, I think, because the thing is, he'll heal Sith Trooper, and Sith Trooper is going to constantly get DI. And if you hit Bane, you're going to he's going to increase his siphon. And Sith Trooper, anytime Sith Trooper crits, is going to ramp Bane's offense. So they're kind of playing off each other. So to speak, um, with that first order level six. But you're put in assuming this is like a back wall defense. You're not going to put a pre taunting Sith tank with. Him? Oh no, I'll do a pre taunting Sith tank. Yes, yeah. so it'll probably be most likely be like, it'll probably be like Bane set and then uh, Sith Trooper. Okay, dig that. And we'll we'll see how that plays. The, but, the um, real Sith Trooper and the fake Sith Trooper. <laughs> yeah, both of them. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, if if because um, Bane, the way Bane's kit reads, it's like um, his lead is he takes health like Grievous, but he goes after the other weakest Sith ally, which is going to be Sith Trooper. But if Sith Trooper is constantly getting damage immunity, and anytime Bane does anything, he heals Sith. Oh wait, no, Bane. If Bane crits, he'll heal Sith Trooper for fifteen percent health and protection. So it's like he takes the health away and gives it right back. It's a decent idea. We'll yeah. see how people handle it, and then I'll just review the data, and then we'll see how I can improve it next 3v3. I will be DMing you halfway through the season to find out. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's pretty cool. I like that idea. Yeah, there's so many crazy stuff, things to do with this, this new set. I'm very curious, too, how... Um, well, it won't matter for week one, but for week two, how the... Um, what, what's the... Acronym for the new Padme? Q Quadme uh, or I mean, something? Queen Amidala, right? So calling her the Queen. Q and A. The queen. queen. People are calling her Queen. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have any plans for her? Have you thought about what she'll be doing in week two and beyond? Uh, I don't really have anywhere to use her because I'm not gonna get be able to wail on the. I don't have Patty Wan Obi Wan. I'm not gonna be able to wail on Master Qui Gon. Which, by the way, I haven't had a chance to look at his kit, but I saw a notification that it came out. That's true, yeah. It's pretty cool. TW on me. Woo! It, uh, <laughs> it, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how much it's going to do in 3v3, but in 5v5, it's awesome. I think it'll be fine in threes. I think I think Padme. I, mean, I keep calling her Padme, and it drives me crazy. Ugh, Queen Amidala. Um, I'm never gonna get that right. I think she's gonna be a disgusting team in three v three when everyone finally gets her. Um, you know, just looking back at the history of this game, anytime you have a, a team that just summons an extra unit, usually just feels really unfair in three v three. I feel like in five v five, it's true. not as noticeable, but in threes, it's just like. And, and and especially since that unit is a tank, like I think she's gonna be an absolute menace on defense. Yeah, I'm curious to see see how it works out. I think the problem is still there's so many offensive teams available, especially with oh, these yeah. two datacron sets we have. 
I mean, that's yeah. what, sort of why I enjoy threes, because there's so many more ways to fiddle with stuff and to try strange things. But, yeah, yeah. So I have a question for you guys, kind of getting ahead of um, 3v3. Um, when Fives comes back around, who do you guys think is going to be the fifth on that team? Because I think we all, we obviously know who the trio is going to be. Um, yeah. And then everyone's probably kind of going to throw Padme on the team as well. But who are you guys looking at for a fifth on that squad? Are they coming out with a new character, or do we have to use someone we have? Are we getting not, the captain? That, are we getting, I don't think like, so. They just, they just, an, they just announced that when... Um, Queen Amidala was announced. They said she's coming with two marquees, and those are Qui Gon and Obi Wan. So it's going to be like a a trio team, and then probably Padme, and then um, the fifth. That's what I'm like. Don't know. I don't know. Mace Windu, something maybe like that, or Ayla. Clone like... Wars Chewie. <laughs> hmm. Cup. Unconventional. Interesting. Another tank is nice. Yeah. Yeah. He has a pretty decent stat line as well. Yeah, he's a big boy. Remove 50% TM on basics, kind of fun. Yeah. The real question hmm. is, gentlemen, how do you intend to mod the queen? I'll, I'll go first. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, if you fought her in Conquest, she is just a, a, just a mess to deal with if she's fast. So my intuition is a speed set, um, probably with a two piece of health. And then speed, uh, speed primary arrow, protection primaries everywhere else, possibly maybe a crit damage triangle with good protection secondary, something of that kind. Um, but the but the somebody shared a infographic from the Gambit server, and it showed that um, the scaling, you know, we're used to like GBA scaling for for the brute to be yeah. like only for health, and it'll be a good ratio for health, but for the Handmaiden Decoy, it's a 1.0 scaling ratio for both health and protection. So um, that means, uh, considering her kid is boosting both health and protection throughout, the most survivability is gonna be with protection. Uh, I know some players that are considering still doing health primaries to maximize the benefits of protection up, but I'm, I'm thinking to go like speed protection and then maybe consider that crit damage triangle, but that's about it. I, I agree with your assessment. Um, I made a video about Qui-Gon's kit today, and I compared Queen Amidala's kit to kind of like the way you mod Trench, just because the team does a lot of healing over time and protection over time. Yeah. And I think you just, like, there's not a lot of the team that do protection over time, but I think protection over time is way more stronger than um, healing over time. Um, and if you just go full protection, it just... It just feels like when they take a turn again and their protection part just tops off, it just feels like you're going nowhere and they're just constantly berating you. And like what you said, Tass, about Conquest, like them being fast, yeah, I think you want her to take, just keep summoning the Handmaiden as many times as possible and your opponent's just not going to go anywhere. And the, here's the crappy part about the Handmaiden. She's not considered a real character. So if you're using Bounty Hunters, your contract ain't going to work. So if you use Hunt mm -hmm. Cartel or something like that, you can't land thermals on her because she's immune to buffs and debuffs. So even like something like Darth Revan, for example, if like you have Basti and you want to hit everyone with shock, well you can't land shock on her in the first place. Because she's just like a yeah, summon. She's, she's not... so annoying. You just have to have taunt yeah. ignore people. I hate that. That's a decoy. Lot, yeah. I agree. Just, just yeah. from conquest. But like in in normal Grand Arena, we won't have uh five zealous yeah. ambition data discs to get by and and qui-gon boosts everyone's stats too like if you guys haven't seen the kit he like boosts everyone's health by like 50 percent max health protection and then i think it's like if obi-wan <laughs> and Padme are present it's like a hundred percent max health yeah. max protection you're just like okay okay let's see where they're going yeah my yeah. plan for modding was just to give lord vader's mods to her and then give lord vader some other mods it's pretty fair, actually. Yeah. I think when she comes out in fives, though, um, I think, well, I, 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 you know, I don't really weigh on the game, so I'm not going to have Qui-Gon or um, Obi-Wan up and running, but I am going to test for a bad batch. So I'll probably drop Omega from the team and see what they can do with the Galactic Republic Cron and the tech level nine, too. Yeah, that sounds nice. Tech, 
Yeah, I like the tech level nine. I think that's going to be one of the ones that has some really niche, powerful uses. Uh, yep, yeah, I agree. Um, but it's yeah, people gonna know how to use it. I think. Any other any other new? Well, just talking about new things in general besides the queen. Um, how do you guys? What do you what do you think about the new planet in TV? It's not GAC focused, but. I'm tired of TV. To, like, I'm. I'm I'm tired of how much time you got to spend in it and like the later phases, everything blends together. Like I miss, I actually missed some platoons and I felt bad the last day because I thought I already did them because uh, it's so similar, yeah. like all the planets, at, at least for my guild, like we will like poke into like two R9 zones that are mainly just we're deploying, but a lot of the last two phases are just on R8 planets. So it all blends together and it's like, Oh my gosh, like, I don't know, five, like, we have five planets open at one time now, when we have both Zepho and uh, Mandalore open, so I just, I don't know, yeah. I, I haven't, like, really analyzed it much or even played around with it much, just because I'm like, oh, give me a break, yeah, I'm sure it is cool, but I'm kind of exhausted. I, I like the, I like the missions, but just like Zepho, there's no particular, I mean, it just gives you a few more rewards. And that's it, like nothing special, which I find sort of disappointing. I yeah. uh, I want them to remove, in MLB baseball, I want them to remove the pitch clock from baseball and put it into TB. I'm like, give us a five minute limit on the battles because I feel like these battles go on for more than five minutes. And I want a valid excuse when I fail my missions <laughs> and say I ran out of time, sorry because these new missions do feel like they take forever. Like the, the Dark Trooper Moff Gideon one. Oh, yeah. You got to go around the horn like 20 times. And I'm just like, it's just taking forever. And the only reason it's taking forever is because the uh, the AI has like a thousand speed. You know, they just take forever. The debuffs just don't stay. They fall off. And, and it's not that the battles aren't doable. It's just like like Sanji just said, it's just time consuming. And I remember like when I was looking at like uh, my phone, I was like, we're attacking five planets at once today. I'm like, we yeah. got Mandalore, we got the, 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 the dark, the mix, the light, and then we also have um, the Zepho. bonus one from Jedi. Yeah, Zepho. I'm like, I'm like, what the hell's going on? Like, I don't have time for this. I, I yeah, asked our, like, and... I asked our TV officer if we can just go for less stars, cause, or, like, take a vote on it. I was, cause I was like, do we care? Like, let's go for, like, two or three less stars, and, like, 50 to 60 percent less effort or something yeah i mean i don't know i'm really disappointed with this tp though just because when they first announced it it looked so cool that they were going to be like adding stuff and i'm i'm just shocked we still haven't got a second character yet i yeah. mean i feel like we should be on a third character by now with all the different paths um i don't think anyone's even really gone to the r9 planets yet so it's like i'm just i, I don't know i just uh I wish they would redo this TB a little bit. Maybe like, like when they bring in Zepho, maybe replace one of the previous planets for a limited time. I don't know, but like try to keep it within the same time constraint. Yeah, I, I thought yeah. when they like when they announced it, when they said new paths, I thought it was like, oh, instead Choose. of going to Kashyyyk, we're gonna go to this other one. Like I thought it was gonna be like that, but like every time they yeah. add a new one, it's like simultaneous and people stagger it out. So you have like it, the same this extra plan for multiple zones. And like Ken said, the the rewards are not compelling to me. Like any anyone that can or that is in a guild or not anyone, I'm sure there's some people that need Kyrotex, but like people that are able to get this these done don't really need Kyrotex. I mean, I have like over right. a thousand of each, like fifteen hundred. Like newer players need that. If you want to add like a a day one bonus planet or something that's easy to to finish, like people would be happy with that or like a phase one phase two yeah. that newer players can actually get to but like i don't know phase four phase three like you need r8 characters r7 characters uh i don't know i've, I've talked to guilds lower guilds before and it, it's it's completely like tainted the way they farm stuff as a guild and it's like there's some people that are like you need to go for Jedi Knight cal Kestis because we need the kairos it's like they're going so far out of their way to just get a little bit extra Kairos when they really should be focusing on like maybe the raid teams or stuff where you can benefit a lot more from. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I agree. It's like 
I feel like maybe all of us, I don't think any of us really struggle with Kairos here, but we're all able to do these special missions, and the people that do need the Kairos really shouldn't be farming for these teams, because these are really kind of like cherry-picking endgame teams, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, the challenge, though, for most players is the impression that most mid-game and lower players have. This is just my impression of their impression, so I'm sure it's off by a, a few percentages <laughs> somewhere. Um is that raid teams, investing in raid teams is impossible because A, it always requires a brand new faction that is effectively whale only, and B, the raid is going away in six months. That's not actually true, but like, if you is see what people are saying now? on the- they Yeah, yeah, it is, and it'll probably be closer yeah. to a year, but just the impression is why invest in raid teams? I'll take what I have, I'll do it in a few minutes, get my, you know, 50% effort reward, when in actuality, I think that is actually one of the best places to spend your resources. Well, I agree totally with what you're saying. Only if your entire guild's committed to it. If your entire guild True. is going to do it, it is it, it is an insane payout for everybody. Absolutely agree. Um, but in some ways, that's sort of the same as TB. Like, if your whole guild doesn't do TB... I, on the, the mm -hmm. like in-game raid payout like it's it's good it like it's great with the extra tier three currency my guild does the 400 million and i i at first i kind of wanted us to go for the 600 but now i don't really care because i have I, as i use that i'm buying impulse detectors and middles and electriums and my rate of signal data doesn't increase to match that output so i have like 300 of electriums and zimbittles and like 200 impulse detectors and the arrow magnifiers, I still have 500 from the C pit days. So it's just like, I don't really, I don't even really care that, but like on my main account, I don't care that much about the raid stuff either. Cause uh, even on my baby account, I'm getting the same amount of tier one and tier two. Those are actually more interesting to me if they were to add, if they started adding more of that. It, it's kind of like, it's like a broken system in favor of lower end players. Uh, in that regard, for the tier one and tier two, and then for the tier three, I, I don't know about you guys, I don't care as much anymore because I'm not getting more signal data anywhere else. I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm super forever hungry. I'm super forever hungry. So yeah, I have, <laughs> I have 25 arrows right now. So I'm always buying arrows, and like once I hit 20, I'm like, I have to spend it right now. So arrow magnifiers. Like, Who's Yes. My brother, my brother. Like, I'm always trying to maximize some type of... If yes. I have an R8 and it's, like, specifically not waiting for some type of new character, R8, R9, best believe it's getting assigned before the next week lock in yeah. GA's there. You you're kidding? like, wait a minute. You, you, have, a you have a driver's everything. license and a ship? Oh, yeah, you're getting one, too. Sold. How many R8s you know do you have, Van Seal? Like, I didn't... I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I honestly don't. I, I don't. I have I, no idea. I, I just feel like I will yeah. never be able to use my stockpile of air magnifiers on characters that make any sense. What are you? What are you constrained on? Signal well, data. You back from dumping all of those arrows. Signal data. Just signal data. Well, uh, forever. All, all I am forever like, signal even... data hungry. And. I will say this: I am is... signal data hungry right now because I'm at the constraint of farming sap and tarples oh yeah so yeah it's whatever that, it's whatever really whatever too. um whatever um events come out that give me signal that i'm at the mercy of that right now but i should be done with staff in about a day or two and then um the gungan hopefully will be a little bit faster since he's like on a cheaper node i've had horrible drop rates in my staff it's like i think i'm getting about a 15 oh, he, to 20 he's... percent drop rate yeah it's trash i just finished it but it's horrible yeah so i believe it and and, uh, this is very interesting. The oh, sorry. Go ahead, Sanjay. No, no. Go ahead. What you're saying it might relate. No, I was saying it's it's quite interesting the way that people spend their resources. Um, in in one hand, I also am not super bothered about getting like the most, but it bothers me that I don't get the most if for whatever reason that doesn't happen. Because that, I mean, why would I not want an extra ten percent in my numbers? That's just the way that they should be. But the uh, the spending on characters, oh man! If I can't R eight a full team if I need to, that makes me a little anxious. Mm. So Dang. I have 
especially for this raid, I have a, a boatload of stuff. Probably can go 10 characters to R8 with what I've been farming. Like, I'll, I'll keep, I only have one or two R9 um, materials. Um, but R8 stuff, I'm I'm ready for the raid to drop. Uh, right, yeah, lately you my R9s R10? have been GLs. Yes, R10, please. Something please. else. All right, we need some other advancement mechanism. Yeah, I, I want. Yeah, I want more progression. I don't know if I care about relic ten or not, but I I would like some more progression at this point. It's Bring it time. out, please. Yeah, right now the game, honestly, if the game continues like it is now, in another six months to a year, like GAC is less and less interesting because there's like no real feeling besides my pride and accomplishment no real motivation to focus on top 10 versus top 50 or top 100 or top 250 or whatever. Um, TW is just a time sink. The rewards are not bad. You know, you get R and buying materials and Datacron rerolls, but either you're a TW officer or you just beat the fights that you need to win the fights you need to win. TB and Conquest are just time, 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 time. Raid is time. No new way to advance your characters. Yeah. So basically, it's in the GAC, doldrums. That's what it feels like. Even with all the cool new characters we have, some awesome new uh, like character mechanics. The meta is actually pretty fun. I mean, it's offense heavy, but it's cool. There's a lot of things to, a lot of choices to make. But it's sort of I, for what? I don't want you guys to hang too much hope on Relic 10. Not that it's not coming. It is. But, like, I don't want you to hang too much hope that it's going to be the, the change that you want. Because whatever the material is that's going to make it, it'll be limited at first. Not everybody, yeah. you know, there, there'll be... When you're busy having one, uh, a whale is going to have, like, four or five, right? Like, one of the big krakens is going to have, like, four or five. When you have two, they're going to have, like, eight to ten. Something something like that. Um, but it's still going to be fairly small numbers. But if they if they were in to introduce Relic 10 in tandem with, like, a board expansion or something, chaos ensues. <laughs> because now you have to think about where you're applying that Relic 10 on a board where its impact is actually a little less now because we've widened things out. So it's got to be, you got to really pick it carefully. You can't feel like you can be a little casual with it. I don't know. I don't know if I, like, I don't disagree with everything you just said, but like, hmm? like, I feel like when you look at like the, the tower of power in this game, <laughs> like Datacrons are at the top. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Datacrons right. at the top, and Datacrons were introduced after we already had Relic 9. So, I don't know if they would add, like, an extra, uh, if they would crank everyone's Relic up, level up one. If it would really change a whole lot. Now, maybe with ships, it absolutely Well, that's could. my point, is that yeah. just the Relic level alone isn't all that much. You'd have yeah. to pair it with, maybe not the change I mentioned, but some other change to really feel like we're moving the needle. Yes. Yeah. That makes sense. That's why I want mods, because that affects everything. Do you want that seven dot be... mods? Yeah, something else. Double the stats on the mods. I mean, that, <laughs> that'd be stupid, but, you know. Whoa. Yeah, no, that, that'd probably be, be too much, but you're definitely not the first end game player I've heard talk about uh, wanting seven dots. I'm terrified about it because I, I'm fighting people that, like, I have... I have good mods. I have good mods. I'm fighting people who have like 1.75, 2.5, my mod count for everything, for speed, for offense, whatever you want. But it's it, like, I'm I'm horrified to think about what seven dot would mean to fight these people. Yeah, it's true. I don't, I don't know what they would do to fix GSUTW. Like, I don't think board expansion is the right thing. I don't know. I don't know what they do, because I feel like for, for a lot of players, especially us, um, like when a new character comes out, I really don't ever feel the need to get it, because I'm like, my roster is so big, um, there's multiple ways to skin a cat. You know, it's like, if, if this is not the only answer to the problem they just created, it's like, well, this game's been going on for almost nine years, I just need to look at my roster and be like, okay, that'll work, that'll work. 
it's all about figuring out your path to getting the results you want. So I just, I don't know. But that's good I, yeah, game design, design, right? We would it complain is, it that's is. complete dog shit that every yeah. time they release the latest, greatest thing, you need like the latest, greatest thing to beat it. Right. Well, for players that don't have a developed roster, that might be how they feel. So that's if they don't have, if they only have a couple of GLs, I know, yeah. And it's like the light speed bundles, that's what they're for. Which those are fine. I'm glad players are able to speed up um, their progression, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I almost, I was almost thinking, like, what if they made a game mode? I mean, I guess it's called Arena, but you know, make a game mode where it's competitive, and there's no Omicrons, and there's rewards. Which again, I guess that is Arena when there's crystals still in there, but with the GAC style with like a bracket system, um, something like that, just to mix it up, or maybe like a. It'd be nice if they brought back like a vanilla season where they say, hey guys, no datacrons in the season or something. There's some, some something to mix it up. Something... Special rules. Yeah, I know Special we talked rules about that in the previous yeah. episode. Special and rules. This isn't our first time talking about how to deal with this problem. And like board expansion is def. I'm right there with you. It's like the least favorable. It's the kicking the can solution. Yeah. But like, it, it, I think we'd agree that compared to stagnation, like the problem that we've been having is we have too much for offense, right? So at least if the board is expanded, then you're spreading things out and there's a little bit more decision making to be made. I'm saying this is a grace to CG, right? Like yeah. give us something and buy yourself a little bit of time. But yeah, you talking about like special rules in Grand Arena or a completely new competitive mode, uh, Besides, they've been doing so much work laying like a long-term future for this game. If they're, they have to be considering something like this already, and I hope they are yeah. because you're exactly right. Like the game needs something like that. That you, you, all of you guys expressing your frustrations with that. I can't tell you how many, um, especially like top 100 players that are feeling it's like, man, this is stale. And, and the, yeah. this is the last thing I'll add to that is like. That might be part of the reason why I played GSC the way I played GSC. Um, I, I was told a long time ago by um, you, guys, you guys all remember Clash, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, of yeah. yeah. So we were talking one time, and um, this is right before he quit. And he was saying, like, you know, there's no content in Swiggle. You have to make your own content. You have to make the game fun for yourself because it's just wait, wait, rinse and repeat over and over. A while ago. Yeah, two years it, almost. I want to say a year it, and a half, two years. Was yeah. it before or after Conquest? Because before they did like uh, Conquest and Galactic Conquest. Challenges, I that was that. that was like the real period where people were like, "Oh, there's nothing to do," because they hadn't come out with a new game mode in forever. But after so, that, people sure, were like, actually. "Okay, we're good for now." <laughs> so, um, so he said, like, you know, like you have to make your own content, and like, like the way you guys are talking about GAC right now, how there's just there's so much on offense. Like I said, I throw everything on defense, even the stuff that's not supposed to be there, and it makes GC fun for me. It makes GC fun for me because I know I'm not going to full clear, and I know my opponent's not going to full clear. That's the plan. So I have to just get more banners. Like like half of my GACs, I will preload every GL, not on purpose. I look like a total dumbass when I do it, but I will still feel like, yeah, I could still win. I could still win. We just need to get to, like, I could see the finish line. I, I put the goal post here. I'm like, yeah, we just need to get there because I know they're not going to do this. I play it differently because... Taking everything on offense, it's just like, I don't know, just it, like like what you guys have described. It's really repetitive. The thing is, though, I actually really enjoy the fighting part of GAC. Like, the character combat is yeah. the reason why I started this game, and it's the reason why I'm still playing this game. It's just that all the mechanisms around it make me want to spend more time to plan more and strategize more and use more tactics and stuff. I That's get to use my whole roster. Game. Like, I think there was one fight. I did 16 battles against Lord Vader because I just had the worst RNG where, like, Maul hit Bam, but he hit Bam just soft enough where he didn't get the bonus turn or the damage community. And then his next hit immediately killed him. And I was like, of course. Of course. So I threw, like, 16 teams at Lord Vader, and lo and behold, the team that got me to a soul Lord Vader for a clean cleanup was Ewoks. I was like, oh, man, I totally forgot Princess Nisa does... All that anti-days, anti-dot stuff. I'm like, oh, what do you know? Cool. It's it's very brave of you, and I, I wish I I wish I I wish I could. I feel like I yeah. wish I could. Like when you're fighting like the biggest guys, yeah, like, in your position, you can't. I really I miss that style of play, though, man. I really wish I could. I'm 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 jelly. 
I'm jelly. And I'm like, I'm in K1, so I'm like... I mean, yeah, I'm sort of where are you? Why are you? You, you can, Tess. I, You're not going to get a top 10 technically anyway because all these erodium accounts you could just plummet and then like like see how well, well, far you fall you know doing that to same be the thing very best like no one ever was i have no loyalty to any strategy save for the ones that will win so i'm i am constantly doing whatever is going to work but i i so but if, like I, if Ash I had it my way i would enjoy having much more on defense and getting so, the mud fight more but like there are people who it's like if you set a heavy defense they full clear you anyway for better banners like in the top i don't know top 50 top 20 yeah, Kyber yeah one. you can't like, really hold the it's yeah. mud bro i miss it i'm just i'm just you saying should, I miss you should that go kind of slumming stuff. you should go slumming down in the lower <laughs> oh, here's the thing you might be able to ranks. i don't know i don't think we've talked about this yet but you remember when cg said they're going to adjust k1 to let more people in and this might give There's you a guys lot more perspective in. rhyming cat yeah, and yeah, i think i'm like rank 3000 like 800 or something like i'm in k1 but k1 is it's big it's yeah yeah it's big and i remember there was a point where we may have like a, another rung up the ladder sometime soon i remember like before they made the changes there wasn't even a thousand players in k1 funny yeah there, there was a little I'm, over a thousand but yeah it was like it was way smaller yeah, and now, it's, now, it's stabilized now. It's, now it's, you can't. The last now you can't be elitist by just saying you're in Kyber One. That that's <laughs> a small right, change. Right, right, that's right. Right, but like to my point, I was saying like I'm still getting the same crystal payout, so I'm like, yeah, I'm not in the top 100, but I'm like I get to roll around the mud with Ewoks and Lord Vader. <laughs> I respect it. Yeah, I think that's good. Well, on that note. One actually has anybody else played with the PC client? I know I I put in yeah, yeah. and I never heard back. I got it. Maybe you're too far down the alphabet. No, but Tass has it and Ben Sila. It's I pretty just awesome. Directly, I just re directly messaged him. I was like, "Hey, man, I I don't know what I did wrong. I maybe I don't know, but code, please." And he's like, "Sure." Who who'd you message? Meathead. Oh. Yeah. Um, well, I, I applied for the beta and then I got an email the beta and then I like downloaded the the EA desktop app. Couldn't find it. Like it it didn't show up. Reached out yeah. to Moonhead and he fixed it for me. So he, he got mm. me sorted out. Same thing happened with me. Yep. Nice. I just I just applied and and got it and it's pretty awesome. I've got to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they got to make some UI adjustments. There's a lot of negative space and I got to I got to bring out my reading glasses for some certain things, but um. It, but, I only had one day where it was really buggy, and I sent yeah. it straight to. I told me it immediately. I was like, "Hey man, it's having a lot of hiccups, and I'm not running any other background." So I just sent him the footage, and he's like, "All right, thanks." But for the most part, yeah, it's crisp. Are you running yeah. on a Windows 11 machine? Uh, huh? Yes. So I'm on Windows 10, and I could I could share you guys screenshots here, but um, like the the colors are either like super saturated or really really dull and gl uh, grayed out depending on how you oh, toggle the, the graphics settings hmm. um like especially in fleet like everything's just like gray washed and stuff like that so uh, like those are some minor issues but as far as like frame rate stability like i've never seen it crash just yeah. just greased lightning uh fps just absolutely gorgeous so I know they'll dial it in, and I, and you know I'm I'm at the legacy end of of a Windows machine, right? Like Windows 10 is still supported, but for however long, you know. There there are some audio bugs that I and I I always apologize to my viewers because I I blow out their eardrums. So there's some audio bugs with the PC client. You can have the audio turned all the way down. Um, Darth Revan's Force Lightning, and IG12's like voice commands whatever like the no 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 the yes, yes yes they play at max volume that sounds like a feature not a bug there you go there you go cool there. yeah it's it's fun i'm curious when they finally release it because it's pretty nice for anybody who likes to play on the pc and for streamers like all you guys all of us. i can't use it yet because of the color issues like i'd rather i'd rather start every few fights with blue stacks and have it not look like like hard-boiled ass for a couple hours at a time. Makes sense. On that delightful turn of phrase,
anything anything for you guys to add here before we uh, we uh, turn it down for for this season? Sanjeet, anything? Last no, comments? I'm good. Pass. No, thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm excited about the new season. Can't wait. I'll always enjoy uh, the chaos set. Definitely. And Seal, how about you? Nope. Other than uh, I think the main thing I'm going to be focusing on is just figuring out Bane on defense and just really diving into that project. I cannot wait to look at the GG stats for Bane on defense. I'm very curious. Van, Van Seal's Bizarro World. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thank you again very much. Thank you, everybody, for listening, watching, etc. And uh, talk to you next month. Cheers. See ya.